Bill Burr is one of the best comedians that we have. He's one of the best truth tellers. He's probably the closest thing to George Carlin that we've really got. So let's hear it. Realize that college campuses erupted with the kids demonstrating for Hamas. They are in with the terrorists. Oh, they, they were. He is such a he is such a shithead. Like, give me a freaking break, man. They're with the. Why why are these kids out here supporting Hamas? It's a, yeah. I can't do Bill Maher. You people. Uh, Kyle, uh, got his last name. There's a guy on Instagram who does the best Bill Maher impression you've ever seen. Okay. These kids supporting Hamas. No, they're not supporting Hamas. They're supporting the Palestinian people. And there is a genocide being perpetrated against them as we speak. For the Palestinians. Well, it's sort of the same cause. Why, are you? Um, I'm on the side of the kids. Yeah, that's easy to say. You know, no one wants to see kids dead. Uh, this is a war. That was that, very brave of you to say that. This is a, this is a war. <laughs> no, I'm the one who's actually brave on this. Uh, it's oh, e it's pat e yourself on the back. It's easy to say <laughs> I'm for the kids. Who's not for the kids? Well, it I don't comes understand. down to real hard-nosed decisions. Like no, a country- stop talking like you're a general. A country got attacked. <laughs> Israel got attacked. I'm not saying that they didn't have a right to go back. I'm just sitting there going okay. like, how do I look at what? Well, the only country in the world that uh, they get attacked and then as soon as they counterattack, it's like, well, we got to stop this shit now. It's occupied territory, Bill Maher. It's occupied territory. The Palestinians have been living under bondage for over 75 years. And I know you want to pretend that isn't what's happening, but that is what's happening. And that is why they're reacting the way that they are. Don't attack them. There's a very simple solution to all this problem in the Middle East. Stop attacking Israel. Hey, you Stop just attacking it. Israel. You just I solved did. it. I actually there did. There you go. That's fantastic. Anyway. All right. We let's, don't need let's, to get let's onto go to, that. Let, let's go to Russia and uh, the Ukraine. How do you solve that one, Bill? <laughs> Let me hear your hard-nosed decision about that. Well, let me ask you a question. How, it, how is war still legal? With all the shit that's been canceled. Legal. Why is that still fucking legal? Would you like a real answer to that? Because to, for something to be illegal, you have to have the capacity to enforce it. And you can't enforce against war or else you have to go to war with the country that's going to war. Bullshit. We are supplying the weapons, the money, the resources to Israel. And despite what President Biden wants you to believe that he now all of a sudden is not sending weapons of war to Israel to complete their genocide in Rafah, that is what's happening because we have oversupplied them for the longest time. He is just politically posturing at this point. And we all know that there is a heavy contingent of Christian Zionists in this country and they support the GOP. So by that measurement, it is a lose-lose situation all the way around but we are past the point of no return. We have been there for a while. And the fact that he is such a, for somebody who tries to come off like a know-it-all, he knows nothing. And we don't want to go to war with Russia over Ukraine. What would be the sense of making it illegal? Oh, that's really going to stop Putin. No, to stop people from going to war, you have to also put you boots. Can't sit down and talk it out. Do a Why can't Putin do a podcast with the head guy? Like you just solved the Middle East on a podcast. Why can't they solve what they're doing on a podcast? See, make this some, is why this is not your thing. Make, make, this is make my, some this hard notes. This is, <laughs> this is it's my not thing. your thing. It's what you. you it is my. It thing. isn't your this thing. This is not it your isn't. thing. You're like that Plain guy that has a fantasy football team no, and thinks no, he's no, a fucking no, GM. No. <laughs> he is. He is like Bill Burr is the closest thing to George Carlin that we have today. He really is. He is the closest thing we got. And he is nailing Mar to the fucking wall. And he, to Bill's credit, Bill Mar's credit, because we've got two Bills here, he kind of is smart enough to know that I really shouldn't challenge Bill Burr because he'll bury me where I stand. At least he's smart enough to get that, but then he made this smart-ass comment at the end, this really isn't your territory, it's my territory. And Bill Burr's like, the fuck it is. Wise talking points. Very wise. 
I know normally I would suggest that Bill Burr would have um, the desire to really stick it to, to Bill in that instant, but I can also understand he's doing this interview in on his podcast at his home. It's just him with cameras around. It's not like it's in front of a studio audience. It's not like he can just you know get up and walk out if things aren't working out. But kudos to Bill Burr for somebody finally sticking it to him. It, it was, it's it's so beyond the pale at this point that Bill Maher is able to get away with what he gets away with. And that's also one of the detrimental components of his show is that he doesn't have people on there that are going to push back against him, at least certainly not anymore and probably hasn't for a very long time. The transition with Bill Maher, and it's, but, the problem with Bill Maher said he's probably always just been this way. Although I do believe that when he started wearing those smart glasses, you know, that is what took it to the next level. Uh, that's of his um, buffoonery and his aloofness and elitism because he's got it all. I mean, he really does. He really thinks his shit doesn't stink. It is. It's quite unique. And what's going to be very interesting to see, and this has been pointed out quite often, and I believe this, it's going to be very interesting to see what ends up happening when a lot of people start trying to come around on this issue. Like Ariana Grande over the weekend had a concert and apparently called for Biden to, you know, try to, you know, have a ceasefire and stuff. It's like, you don't get a pass now. You don't. The only thing that matters is get it, stop it. But you will forever be remembered as a genocide enabler, just like everybody else who encouraged what's going on in Ukraine to continue when they know that there is no way to win. The only thing that matters is how many lives can you save? NATO became what it became. It expanded, even though it wasn't supposed to, because we believe in world domination. Can't do that now. And if you think that the problems that are existing now with what's going on in Ukraine as a result of Russia finally deciding, yeah, well, now we're really going to show you what shit's how shit really goes down. Now, what do you think is going to happen when China tries to do the same thing in Taiwan because we just can't stick our fucking noses where it doesn't belong? That's the Ukraine, Russia, that's the appetizer. China, Taiwan, that's the entree. That's the real war. And that is a war. We don't we we don't want that guys.